So I would have to say this is the best winter system that I can come up with. So what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. What a turn of events um, this week has been. My gosh, a week ago today, look a week ago today, it was 81 degrees. Right now, it's 21 degrees. It's cold. Finally, it feels uh, like December, but um, even yesterday, yesterday, it snowed. Like we got like, I mean, no, accumulated to nothing, but legitimately like snow was falling from the sky and I was like, it was 81 degrees. I was in a tank top and shorts a week ago. But needless to say, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's cold. All right, let's go check out our cars, see how everybody's doing. What's up guys? You guys doing all right? It's freezing cold, literally. And uh, let's go, you gotta go check on all the cows. Okay, it looks like they punched through a little bit, but. And for example, yesterday, the high was like 36 or 37 degrees, so it barely, barely got above freezing, which is extremely rare for here. Um, the only the other time that, you know, I never got above freezing during the during the day was last February during that winter storm, Yuri, the snowpocalypse, that was just, that was a lot. But yesterday, I'm thinking, it's going to be the coldest day of the year, or of the winter. So hopefully, you know, we got that out of the way with on the second day of the year. And now we can just gradually warm up and, you know, be in the, you know, it freezes at night, but gets into the 40s, 50s, 60s during the day. That's fine with me. This whole, you know, the high of 36, <sighs> chilly. And let's see if we're good to go today. Yesterday, this did not freeze. This, uh-oh, that froze. Uh, that's not good. Nope, that's frozen. At least they have water. I filled them up last night. And I came out here around probably 11 o'clock last night because we are officially on baby watch. Um, all the signs are there to have one of our heifers, or one of our longhorn heifers, Ellie, um, calf for the first time. So we're gonna go try and find her and see maybe there's a baby. Now, Am I positive that this is uh, this is the time? Is my positive that she's gonna give birth now? Um, no, we've only had one calf here on the farm. And that was Skywalker, who was a complete and utter surprise. I had an inkling that the mom was pretty pregnant, but I didn't know for sure. Um, but now let's go. Let's go see if we can find Ellie, because you guys can see what I'm talking about, and maybe you guys can give me an idea how close she is. What's up, Ellie? Here she is, right here. And she looked fatter yesterday, but you can see her backside eh, getting pretty jiggly. She's got a, uh, she's developing, let's see if I can get her neither. See, she's got a bag now. You know, heifers, they usually don't develop right away. And then I felt right over here with her backside about her, you know, her ligaments getting freed up and they, there's an indention there. So I think that's what they call pins dropping. Oh uh, baby, so we'll see if I'm if I'm right on that. I think I am because of how big she is and kind of the way she's walking. And you, you want to come say hello? You want to come say hello? I know you're a good girl. You're a good girl. Okay, good girl. You're due in February, aren't you? Good girl. What I really wanted to show you guys today is our winter system here and this deep bedding system that we have. Basically, we put out a hay bale, actually two hay bales, and then the cows eat on it, and their waste becomes their bedding. And it's built up quite a bit, you know, they, they manure on it, and then uh, it gets covered with hay, like that. And then what we get is down here. Look at this, this is starting to compost. This is starting to become really, really pretty good. It's heating up big time, actually, and it goes down pretty, you can see it goes down pretty far see look at that and this here this is warm so when I came out here last night 
and I think it was 19 degrees, all the cows are laying down in this. All of them, all of them are laying down. None of them are eating. They're all just laying down, hanging out. And I was worried about them because it was 81 degrees a week ago. Um, it looked like they shed off a lot of their winter coats because it was so warm for so long. Um, they threw it back on pretty quickly. You can see them starting to look all shaggy again. But I still was a little bit worried, especially with Ellie, um, that it was going to be you know, just cold for them um, just because of the big temperature shift. But I come out here and I'm walking on this deep bedding system that we have here. And my gosh, my feet are warm. I know why they're all laying down in it. There are all kinds of warm in here because this is heating up. And I don't know, I don't have a big time thermometer, but this is a, a compost thermometer. But this here, you can see it's, it's definitely, it's heating up and it's composting and they're all laying down in it. And you can see, look, there's, there's some steam happening. And that warmth is keeping them a lot warmer. I mean, it was, it's really impressive. You come over here, and it's in this section here that they're, uh, they're in, it's gotta be 15 degrees warmer. See where we're not doing the deep bedding at? We're just giving them a sacrifice lot. Look, it's all iced over. Over there, not at all. Over by, the, I mean, it's because they're walking on it and stuff. But there's a definite difference in the amount of heat that's coming from the ground. And you see on this side here, we're doing the same thing. Um, we kind of go back and forth, switching sides. And here, yeah, it's it's definitely heating up. Definitely, man, I can feel it on my feet. I wish you guys could, could feel it too. Um, here, what we basically do is we'll go on one side for, you know, a couple rounds of hay. Uh, if it rains, then we move to the other side. And basically we just go back and forth and we just get away from the moisture and let one side dry out um, while the other side is getting ate on. And then when it rains, we'll come back on this side and just keep switching back and forth. That way, uh, if you keep it drier, um, it's, it keeps the parasites away a little bit better. And But because of the, the bedding that we're using here, because of how much hay is on the ground, um, I don't think that we're going to have an issue with that. We haven't, had, we haven't seen any signs of any kind of parasite problem or any kind of parasite pressure because they're not eating next to their manure. They're eating on top of it, um, which is covered by carbon. So you mix nitrogen and carbon, you get compost, basic formula. But here, this is, this is awesome. Look, see he's laying down in it because it's, it's heating up, huh Hollywood? You like that, your horns are getting impressive too, dude. The llamas, they like it too, look at them. Look, they're covered with a little bit of a frost because that's the llamas but they come from the andes so they're fine but they'll come lay down in here as well but they actually because they stay so much warmer because of that that fleece that they have <laughs> they actually don't lay down in here you see the way that a llama can get hot or cold is from their armpits so i think it's even a little bit too warm here for them to uh to lay in and the plan is come springtime when the cows go back out on pasture because, I mean, it looks like it's all white right now, but there's so much green out there. We're going to start be able to start grazing so much earlier um, than last year. The plan is to bring pigs in here. It, and that is if we can get all the projects we need to get done to set up for them um, done. We're not going to rush it. We have a lot to do across the street at the new farm. Um, but if we can get that done, probably bring some pigs in here. And what they're going to do is... We didn't, we didn't lay down any corn in between the, the, the hay bales, but we'll probably go and dig up a couple lines and throw some corn in there. That way what they do is they go root up all this and they turn this, uh, this is an anaerobic environment here with them stomping on it, you know, the cows stomping on all this stuff. So there's no oxygen getting to the compost that's underneath us. So we're gonna turn an anaerobic environment into an aerobic one because the pigs will go root up and do pig things here and turn this into a pretty nice compost. Just like the way that Joel Salton does it over at Polyface, they, we don't have an awning here, we don't have uh, you know a shed per se, that's why we kind of go back and forth where we feed the hay bales. But with the amount of bedding that we have in the two different sides, and we even tried doing it on the third side but it was just unnecessary, just you know trying to move the parasites away a little bit more. Um, this is going to work, I think this is going to work really well and we'll take this compost and spread it back out on our fields 
and basically everything I've read everything that Joel said about when he does it when other people have done it it's basically just going with a green paintbrush and painting on and seeing the grass just explode in that area and there's a couple areas of the farm that we could use it but this here by far I'm liking this a lot I'm liking this system a whole heck of a lot we just come through the gate drop off a hay bale with the hay dolly and uh, do it twice that lasts them here about uh, I'd, li I'd like to say four days but probably about 3.8 days if I'm being honest um, and then they eat on it they create their own bedding they drink from uh, the water over there which will fill up later once it uh, you know thaws out a little bit they have enough for the morning and it's super easy on me last year last year was very difficult the way we did hay last year was just not fun it was just not fun at all to where you know i don't have a bale on roller i wanted to try greg judy's way i cut the, the net wrap off and then i just pushed it i pushed uh you know a big hay bale until it unrolled all the way that was hard why hay bales are extremely heavy now um did we see any big results from doing that to be honest with you no we didn't um I don't know if I put it on too thick. I don't know if I just didn't do it right. But we unrolled the hay bales here. And, you know, with we have a bunch of Bermuda grass, so it's different than up in Missouri. And we don't really, we didn't come to the farm with a lot of bare spots. I think if we if we had a lot of bare spots that we, put, that we unrolled the hay on, then there would be a significant change. But because we don't have a lot of bare spots here, there really wasn't much of uh see look it's already starting to warm up a little bit it really wasn't much of a change and it was a lot more work it was a lot more difficult you know i still had to keep the cows out on pasture the pasture didn't have you know the time like it has now to rest so moving forward i think this is the way that we're gonna go i mean i really really do like this um the cows because they're able to get in here and get warm because of what's coming up from the bottom um i think they they eat a little bit less hay because uh they're warmer because they need hay to stay warm in the winter time or they that's how they they generate heat as they ruminate so they eat a little bit less i feel like they're more comfortable and they're i'm taming them down a lot more a lot, a lot of them i mean ellie here she'll let me rub up on her like nobody's business because she's just sweet and i'm still looking at her i think this is dropped i'm not sure that her pins see she's got here Let's see uh maybe not maybe not ready yet so we'll see about when she's ready to calf but easy um but a lot of the other ones they let me get up on them a lot more like sheep here as i meet actually let me pet her um the other day huh why because you're happy i know okay same thing with skywalker here and it's a lot less work it's a lot less work like I really only legitimately have to do work with the cows um, every three days every three and a half days when I have to move hay bales in here because the way that new IBC to the way that new IBC to is set up I open it up fills up those 75 gallons of water I do it kind of twice a day don't really have to do it twice a day only once 81 degrees out but that takes two minutes literally because it comes out such a full flow and then I have the IBC tote filling up while I'm doing the hay and it works out to where, you know what, when I'm done with hay, the tote's probably just about filled all the way back up and we're done. So I think this is, I think this is the way that we're going to go. Huh? Yeah. Say, yeah, there we go. Nod your head. Yes. Now this system here and it's keeping them all healthy. That was my main concern is if this, if this system could keep them healthy. And the answer is yes. None of them look wormy. None of them uh, seem to dislike it. So I think going forward, this is the way that we're going to go. Now, is it always going to be right here? Um, maybe, maybe not, because we have plans for the big barn here. Um, we might go ahead and build kind of a, a hay shed like Joel Salton does to where we can keep everything super dry. And would that be better? Probably. But... We don't want to go build a whole thing, spend a whole lot of money, and then us not like it. This here, though, 
I think is worth it. We might do that next year, or we might uh, we might go across the street and try and use one of one of the barns at the new farm um, for this system because I'm I'm legitimately happy with this, and it's a lot less stress on me. It's a lot less work on me. I don't have to be out in the cold as much, which uh, makes a difference when it's 21 degrees out. So I would have to say this is the best winter system that I can come up with. The only bad thing is that this is still frozen here. So I can't give them <clears throat> can't give them water just yet, but they have enough from last night to where I don't have to worry about it too much. So that'll thaw out in the next uh, probably couple hours. So I'll just come out here and fill that up for them. But this here, this is really nice and super productive because we're gonna make so much compost that we'll just be able to paint the paint the farm green. That's what uh, that's what the system is gonna do. So with that, I'm gonna get back in the house and warm up a little bit. I'll run back out and probably about an hour and a half, open up their water, fill it up all the way, and the cows will be good to go. But I hope this gives you a little bit of insight in a different way that we're using Joel Salatin's uh, hay shed system or Joel Salatin's idea and making it work on our farm. Hi, oh, buddy. Is it working for you? Yeah, you're all happy. And we can do the same things here that he does in Virginia, just in Texas. Just in a little bit different way and with a little bit different climate. So with that, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, all right? Stay warm. See you next time.